Hello guys, this is Dr. Mamta Patel from Team MDS Concord. In this video, I'll be talking about TMJ dislocation. What is TMJ dislocation? A dislocation of the entire disc condyle complex beyond the articular eminence combined with inability to return passively into the fossa. What is subluxation? An overextension of the disc condyle complex beyond the articular eminence but it has ability to return passively into the fossa. The basic difference between subluxation and dislocation is in subluxation the condyle has the ability to return passively into the fossa but in joint dislocation the condyle is unable to return passively into the fossa once it is out of the fossa. So basically the tissues which are elastic like the capsules, ligament and the structures which are holding the disc in position like lateral pterygoid anteriorly and the retrodiscal lamina posteriorly their elasticity has been lost and the tissue has become lax allowing the movement of the condyle out of the fossa so etiology can be any intrinsic trauma like overextension injury during yawning vomiting white biting scissor disorders or any extrinsic trauma such as flexion extension injury to the mandible or while intubation or while endoscopy or during extraction or forceful hyperextension. Any connective tissue disorders like hypermobility syndrome, Euler Danlos syndrome, Marfan syndrome can also cause dislocation. Other causes include internal derangement, dyssynchronous muscle function, contralateral intraarticular obstruction, or any occlusal discrepancy. Some people may have habitual dislocation as well. Drugs like phenothiazine is known to induce TMJ dislocation. Classification of TMJ dislocation based on Akimbani. It shows the relationship of the condyle with the articular eminence. In type 1, the head of the condyle is directly below the tip of the articular eminence. In type 2, the head of the condyle is in front of the tip of the articular eminence. In type 3, the head of the condyle is high up in front of the base of the articular eminence. So dislocation can be unilateral bilateral. So clinical features of unilateral dislocation include mandible swings away from the side of dislocation. There will be open bite on the contralateral side. There will be distinct hollow in front of the tragus on the ipsilateral side and the occlusion is protrusive. Bilateral dislocation you have pain, inability to close mouth, there will be tense masticatory muscles, difficulty with speech, excessive salivation, a protruding chin and anterior open bite and distinct hollow in front of the tracheus bilaterally. So sometimes the lateral pole of the condyle produces characteristic protuberance anterior to and below the articular eminence. This is a 3D CBCT showing the dislocation of the condyle. This is the articular eminence. This is the glenoid fossa. The condyle has moved out of the fossa. Here in this picture, this is the glenoid fossa. This is the articular eminence. The condyle has moved completely out of the fossa anterior to the articular eminence. So basically, the elasticity of the tissue has been lost and the tissue has become lax, which holds the disc in position. The goal of the treatment is to restrict the mandibular translation to remove any obstacle thus preventing the mandibular dislocation and locking anterior to the articular eminence. In this picture, this is the normal position of the condyle in the glenoid fossa. This is the articular eminence. The condyle moves out of the fossa beyond the articular eminence anteriorly and gets locked here due to the laxity of the tissue which is holding the disc in its position. In case of acute dislocation, it requires immediate attention for the relief of pain and anxiety to minimize damage to the joint structures. Reduction and immobilization for 4 weeks will allow the damaged ligament capsules and disc to heal. Manual reduction of the joint can be done with two methods, Dingman and Natwick method and Urinos method. In this Dingman and Natwick method, the operator stands in front of the patient and the thumbs are placed bilaterally onto the mandibular molars and the mandible is pushed downwards and backwards into the fossa. In this, the operator stands behind the patient 
and one hand is placed on the condylar head and the other hand goes on the lower surface of the mandible holding the body of the mandible pushing it downwards and backwards into the fossa intermaxillary fixation can be done with elastics or batten's bandage what is the purpose of intermaxillary fixation if any damage or injury to the elastic tissue which is holding the articular disc in place has been occurred immobilization causes it to heal immobilization allows it to heal ultrasound therapy it is an another method by which we can promote collagen synthesis by human fibroblast therefore this may help in stabilizing the joint or intra articular injections of plas platelet rich plasma or biologically active molecules or any drugs like corticosteroids can induce fibrosis inside the joint chemical capsulography by skulls in the year 1947 the principle was to induce fibrosis and restrict the joint movement he used 3% sodium tetradecyl sulfate sodium silate emulsion in oil or sodium myriate surgical treatment would include plication of the capsule and ligament plication is nothing but the tissue has been lax so it has become loose the loose tissue some part of tissue will be taking out and suturing it back into the place to increase the stiffness of the joint mirag aminectomy in 1951 mirag has proposed aminectomy can cause reduction in the tmj dislocation the here in this procedure the articular eminence is cut and removed so that when the condyle moves out of the fossa it can passively return into the fossa lateral pterygoid myotomy it is nothing but freeing of the disc with the lateral pterygoid mu muscle attachment anteriorly this was given by bowen this is dotary zygomatic arch osteotomy mayes grafting technique on the eminence which was given in the year 1933 here the zygomatic arch is intentionally fractured and grafted to the eminence to provide a mechanical obstruction obstruction so that the condyle does not move in front of the articular eminence so this is about tmj dislocation i thank team mds conquer for giving me opportunity to speak on tmj dislocation thank you everyone